Hi, it's Joe Mazumdar, Exploration Insights in Toronto at Pre-PDEC at the Metals Investment Forum with uh, Teo Dechev with uh, Mondoro Capital. Yes. And Mondoro Capital, I mean, for the audience, is a prospect generator that uh, we own at Exploration Insights mm -hmm. uh, because it's looking for copper in the Tethian belt of yep. Eastern Europe. So uh, tell us right now, I mean, just on the big picture, what's the sentiment with copper? I mean, we see what's going on in the markets, mm -hmm. but what's the sentiment amongst the industry? Uh, certainly the sentiment amongst the partners that we deal with, which are, you know, Jogmac, um, Freeport and Valet and other groups that have approached us about the region, uh, they have a very strong appetite for copper. Uh, certainly their programs and their budgets are looking long into the future. They're not looking at, you know, the market activity over the last quarter. What they're really thinking about is how much uh, copper resources they have within their own operations, how much demand they see that they project uh, for f coming from their own operations or coming into from their operations. And then uh, really what else do they, where else in the world can they go and, and how much more resources can they discover at those right types of um, size and, and uh, grade. So what makes the Tethian belt so special? The Tethian belt is, first of all, the western portion is in Europe. Yeah. So when you think about, uh, you know, and where... And you're in, uh, what, Serbia? Serbia and Muslim in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. And obviously Bulgaria is part of the European Union and Serbia, you know, is a candidate uh, to get into the European Union. Serbia has had a hundred years of mining. So what's interesting is that when these companies, they're... Probably they're, thousands with the Romans. Uh, <laughs> there's been a lot of, exactly, lots of mining. Um, when you think about what the partner, all these groups that are copper miners, what they really want is, uh, I mean, obviously exploration for them is, is part of their overall portfolio, but when they look for assets that they want to get into production, they look for jurisdictions where they can see that they've got 10 to 20 years of um, lead time in terms of infrastructure, people, community relations, and all of that is already in Eastern Europe. And we've not only seen, you know, you brought uh, Valley into that area, but Zijin came in to buy RTB Bohr, which yes. is a big smelter and the mine, and also bought Nevsen. Yes. And then also purchased a deeper portion of the deposit from Phelps Dodge. That's, That's correct, right. yes. Sorry, Dodge, Freeport. Freeport, yeah. So there's obviously interest in this. So where does Mondoro fit within this picture? Well, we, we kind of created a land package before all of that happened. Our view was we and were... you started like 10 years ago? Ex it? Exactly. We yeah. got involved in uh, 2010. Yeah. Uh, so our view was at the time we were looking for assets for the company uh, because we were transitioning out of one of our assets in China. And it was really clear that if you are going to build a land package around... Um, significant mining infrastructure, there really isn't a lot of places in the world that you can go to where there was available ground. Mm. So when we saw the land package around Timic and uh, certainly some portions of uh, uh, the, the Tethian belt, Panagorishta specifically in Bulgaria, and our view was that is a glaring opportunity that the industry was missing. And the reason they were missing it is because they didn't understand what it was like to do business in Eastern Europe. So our view was, this jurisdiction has got uh, 4 billion tons of porphyry systems, and it had open ground within half a kilometer away from that porphyry system. So our view was, this is a fantastic place to get involved. Um, we got involved, and then Chukarupeki was discovered. And then everyone in the industry kind of re-evaluated, well, why are we not in Eastern Europe? What exactly is the problem? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a company already there that has a land package that has a team that understands the local uh, government communication. And so we became a really natural fit. But this goes to the point of a discovery changes everything. A discovery does change everything. Um, like in terms of, uh, well, can I do something there? But, oh, look, there's a prize there worth trying to find. Exactly. Um, the, I think that what, what Chicago Pecky did was that it... It, it, uh, there were, I think the geologists and certainly a lot of the geological groups that we were talking to felt that there was um, more discovery potential, right. but they didn't, you know, as, as with every department, you have to have kind of a, a lead to, yeah. to demonstrate why the budget should be approved. That entrepreneurial spirit to do that. And exactly. it's hard to find in Eastern Europe. It, it, exactly, but like Chicago Pecky was... It was kind of the, the proof that a lot of people needed to get their budgets yeah. approved to go back there right. and reevaluate the district. But the other part was it's not a huge spend because Mandoro was already there. 
We already built the land package. We already took on all the risk of creating a team, bringing on um, kind of a systematic exploration program. And so really for the, for the partners, for them to then go back and say, I want to make an, uh, you know, a, basically I need a budget in order to go into Eastern Europe, it's an easier ask because they don't have to have a local office. They don't have to set up a local team. Everything was done for them. All right. And, and then your, your enterprise value is like less than $5 million U.S., I believe? Uh, well, it, it was. <laughs> it has gone up. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but you've got three joint ventures with obviously major companies yes. like Valet, Jogmeg, Freeport on big land packages in the Tethian Belt. So mm -hmm. what are the catalysts uh, you know, a potential investor could look forward to in the next six to 12 months from these joint ventures? Yeah, no, that's a great question. The... Certainly with Jogmec, we're in phase two now. Uh, and what we're trying to do is reevaluate how we explore target one. So that's going to be an important uh, news item in the second half of the year. With Valet, we've been going through, we just signed them on in October last year in the fourth quarter. So uh, between last year and this year uh, in the first half, we've been going through an administrative process to get everything uh, aligned so that we can start a program in the second half of the year. So that's uh, another catalyst. And then of course with Freeport, you know, it started off as a, as a smaller program. Uh, when you're target testing, you don't necessarily always know which targets are mm. going to work out. Uh, as we've That's tested... Expiration. <laughs> <laughs> that is expiration. Everyone should come out on site and really follow that. But um, essentially what's gone on with Freeport is that a, a lot of that targeting has created new questions uh, and which definitely have deserved more drilling. And as a result, the program went from 3,500 meters to I guess 8,500 and now has the potential to grow a little bit bigger. So we won't have those results out until the second quarter of the year. But it shows you that there is there is so much um, smoke alteration, uh, bits of mineralization that clearly are coming from somewhere. And when you do a really systematic program, that, that's what creates that, right. that kind of path to success for an economic discovery. Right. And, and now you've got three of those programs in action right now, but you've also got another project right now quickly that you're that you're actually looking at joint venture. So you still got one more pending. There is one more pending. Yes, we want to bring a partner on for Zelesnik, which is just north of the Maidenpeck mine at the north end, which is owned now by Zhejiang. That's an extremely interesting project. It already has a mineralized porphyry that's been discovered there. So we do believe we can bring a partner there. And then we also just got Jogmec in Bulgaria, right? right? So we had the generative alliance with them for all of 2019. Uh, they have <clears throat> chosen three designated projects as a result, and those projects are going to be transitioning into a joint venture. Funded by them. Funded by Jogmec, right. yes. Okay. Yeah. Our, our model is that the partners fund, we operate, and then once they get to an advanced stage, we hand over the keys and they operate, and we right. collect fees for that. Okay, and the and, and royalty, or how do you? Yeah, well, they're, um, they're kind of like an advanced royalty payment because they are offset in the future by the royalty. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Teo. You're welcome. Okay, that's Mondoro Capital, uh, a little company that's got a lot of big companies involved in a, a big part of Eastern Europe uh, looking for uh, large porphyry deposits. It's Joe Mazumdar, Exploration Insights from uh, the Pre-PDAC Metals Investment Forum in Toronto. Thank you very much.